So, in today's video, we're going to look at some common reasons why players miss shots. So, obviously, there's lots of reasons why we might miss shots, but when I'm doing my coaching sessions and when you're watching players in the club, there's some common reasons that seem to present themselves all the time. So, I'm going to look at these common reasons and hopefully, after you've watched this video, you can try and eliminate some of those from your own game. Okay, so we've got this first shot here. I'm on the black and I want to try and get position on this next red. Now, the first common reason that I'm seeing all the time for players missing shots is that you're more concerned about what the white is doing and you've taken your attention off actually potting the object ball. This is very, very common. So on this shot here on the black, I need to play a little stun shot up and I'm trying to get my white up this line somewhere over here for a shot on that red ball. Now, if I put too much concentration on what the white's doing, it's very, very common on a shot like this that I'll see this happen. So you can see I've hit the pot a lot too thick. I've got the white exactly where I wanted to get it, but I've missed the black there because I was more concerned about what the white was doing and I forgot to put my attention on potting that black ball. So the best way to overcome this habit is to make a detailed plan before you even get down to the shot. On this shot here on the black, I know I've got slightly too much angle, so it's easy for me to think, well, I'll hit the black a little bit thicker and that makes it a bit easier to control the white. But of course, it's no good getting on the red nicely if you haven't actually managed to pop the black. So the best way to stop this is to make a detailed plan, take a step back, accept that you've got slightly more angle than you would like, and then once you're down, just committing to potting that black. You can always remember that if you pop the black, at least you've got the next shot. Even if you're not perfectly on the next red, you could always play a safety shot, you've still got control of the table. So on this one here now, I'm making a detailed plan standing here, I'm picking the line, I know I've got that angle on the black that's a little bit more than would be completely comfortable. And then it means you can get down, just commit to that pot now, keep still. I've got the pot that time, I'm nicely on the red, and it was just by saying to myself, before I got down, I know I've got too much angle, make sure I commit to the pot, and make sure I keep still and play the shot properly. Right, so the second really big reason is that players don't pick a positional shot with the white properly. So I've got the shot on the yellow here, and I need to play position on the green. And what you'll see players do is they're a bit undecided between two different shots that they could possibly play. So on this yellow here, I've got an angle where I could possibly screw directly off the yellow and leave the green without even letting the white hit a cushion, and I can leave my white nice and straight on that green. I've also got the option of going on and off the side cushion. And what you'll see players do is they'll get down to the shot here, so they'll be on the shot and they're deciding between the two different options and then by the time they finally play it, they hit the shot to go off the cushion and they find they've missed the shot because they were, didn't pick a shot properly before they get down. Again, you'll see professional players, they've already decided on their shot before their hand even hits the table. Right, so again, the way to overcome that is it's all in the pre-shot routine. Before your hand hits the table, you're going to make a detailed plan of exactly what you want to do with that white ball. So obviously we know we've got to pop the yellow, you're going to commit to that angle, and then by making a clear plan in your mind before your hand even hits the table as to what you're doing with that white ball, you'll make your potting consistency go up even more. So on this one, I'm going to commit to playing on and off the side cushion. I already know that. And then I can walk into my shot like normal, get down on the shot, play on and off the cushion. And by having that detailed plan there, knowing what I was doing before I even got down to the table, my white's in a nice position for the green now, and I've got rid of another bad habit. Now, the third very common reason is not picking the height that you're going to strike on the cue ball before you get down to play the shot. So you're a bit undecided about what shot to play, and then when you get down to the table, you're deciding as you're down where you're going to strike the cue ball and what shot you're going, to, you're going to play. So I've got this blue here, I've got a red up in bulk I'd like to get on, and there's two options here for me to play from the blue to this red. Can't really take the yellow, but it wouldn't get me close to this red. The brown's off the spot. There's not really an option to get nice and close to this red other than taking the blue down into the corner. So if I take the blue down into the corner, I've got two options here. I can either stun off this side cushion and over towards the red, or I can play it round off one, two cushions, and then over somewhere between the brown and green and back towards this red. So the problem you'll get is that players get down to a shot like this and they go, I'll stun it. No, actually, I'll play the bit more screw. I'll st I think I'll stun it, and then by the time you actually play the shot, you've missed the pot because you were completely undecided as to exactly where to strike the cue ball. So you were deciding as you were down between two different shots. Now, the way to get rid of that is to make a nice detailed plan before you get down to the shot, 
And then also, if you find yourself, once you're down on the shot, a little bit unsure, and you're messing about with the height on the cue ball, get back up again, and then reset yourself for the shot. So if I was going to play off one cushion here, and I'm down on the shot, so I've already decided I'm here, and then I decide, no, actually, I'll play it round off two cushions, get back up off the shot again, get back down to the shot so you've set yourself up properly, and then you can play the shot, round off the two cushions, like we said, and then the white comes round, leaving me not a bad shot here on this red at all. But it was all by making a detailed plan. Instead of when I was down on the shot, changing the height on the white ball, I decided that, no, I wasn't happy. Stand back up, decide to play the proper shot the next time, get down at the correct height, do your practice swings, and play the shot nice and confidently. Number four, very, very common reason for missing shots is that you might land on the object ball. So I've landed on the black here and I need to get position on these next two reds. Now the black is my only option, and I haven't really got enough angle to get the white nicely onto the next two reds, or certainly that's what it feels like in, in my mind. So it's very common here for players to, they'll be down on a shot like this, and then when they play the shot, they miss the pot trying to generate the angle that they want with the white ball. So I've got position on the two red balls there, but obviously I've missed the black because I've tried to create an angle with the white that wasn't really there to force the white into a position that wasn't really possible. So you've got to try and make a more detailed plan so that you can get the white where you want without creating an angle that's not really there. Right, now to fix that, I would set myself up with some angles like you can see I've got on the black here, where the white looks like it's quite straight on the black, it's not really possible to force enough angle, but actually it's surprising how much angle you can force out of a shot if you strike the cue ball at the correct pace. So for a shot like this, it's a little bit like I'm playing a stun run through because I've got to pop the ball and then I've got to try and force the white up the table with lots of power. So set yourself up in a position like this so that you can practice a few shots and then you'll be surprised if you hit the correct point on the cue ball at the right power, how much angle you can force out the cue ball and get the cue ball to move up the table. So give yourself a position on the table where you feel like you're a little bit too straight on the black to get onto a couple of reds, just like I've done here and then experiment with different heights on the cue ball, different power on the cue ball, and see how much you can force out of the cue ball, what angle you can generate. One tip there, thing I always tell players to do, when you're talking about altering power and height on the cue ball, only change one of those things one at a time. So I would keep the height, maybe I'd pick right in the center of the cue ball, and I would keep that the same for the next 10 shots, and then I'd play 10 shots in the center of the cue ball, trying hitting the hitting the shot a little bit harder or a little bit softer and see what different results you get with the cue ball. It's the best way to quickly increase your learning and increase your consistency on those shots. Now, the last thing to talk about in this video and probably the most important is how important it is to get your foundation and your fundamentals right. If you can get your technique as nice and neat and as comfortable as you possibly can, that's gonna be the nice foundation and the building blocks for getting more consistent. So it's no good here managing to pop balls if we've got an inconsistent technique. So we don't really stand in the same way. And then when you play the shot, you're getting up off the shot. We don't really know what the cause of misses are when we're doing things like that. So I've got lots of videos all over my channel about lining up the shot, walking into the shot, staying still on the shot, all the basics. So have a look at those. But it's incredibly important, and I'll always do it on a shot, something like this um, with a nice simple shot to the middle here so that I can just purely concentrate on my technique. I haven't got the anxiety of the shot being too difficult. If you try to mess around with your technique too much on shots that are too difficult, I think then it's difficult to work on technique and concentrate on the pot, and it just gives your mind too much to think about. So I always try and do technical changes on nice, simple shots like this. So I would line up the shot, just like I've talked about in previous videos, you're getting down to the shot and then doing all the fundamentals right, keeping nice and still. And when you can get everything right with your technique like that, you know you've got the nice building blocks then for improving your game and improving that consistency. So like I say, nice shot here, walking into the shot, down on the shot, nice backswing, deliver to your chest, keep still. And if you can practice that, do it on some nice simple shots, that'll give you those building blocks you need for improving your consistency. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give the video a like. Also, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of instructional videos, just like this one on the channel, all the time. If anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, then have a look at my website, www.bartonsnooker.co.uk. I'm working with players seven days a week, helping them to improve their game on the table. So, as always, I'll catch you in the next one.
Cheers.